Welcome to Dogwater Radio, brother. How are you doing? Hold on. I'll try that again, and then I'll edit this out, because now it's being weird. Welcome to Dogwater Radio, Mr. Bob Wayne. How are you doing, buddy? What's up, brother? I'm doing good. You doing good? You in Alabama I'm, right now? I'm, I'm out here in Alabama. Right on. It looks like you're getting your house together. Are you still living in the bus, or are you living in your house now? It looks like a house. Oh. I moved. I I got this room here. Kind of sheet rock. I started to sheet rock it. Uh, just this one room. Um, the rest of the house is still Andy. looking like you know huh. a construct construction zone. Huh. But, uh, I got the, the bathroom. Back- I I I I've sheet rocked and insulated one bedroom. So I have my little desk here, and I'm. Yeah, I moved out of the bus, man. It's been crazy. That's actually the house looks a lot better than you described it, man. Looks like you've been working on it a little bit through COVID. Oh no, I, I totally gutted it. I've totally got everything prepped. Now it's just a matter of getting hanging the sheetrock, finishing the sheetrock, painting, and doing the floors, and we're good. Reliving your labor days back in your working man days. Yeah, buddy. Right on. So hey, you got some ghost stories for us? I heard, or as an alien? I don't know. Surprise you know, you know, I have a, I have a bunch, but a bunch of weird, like weird stuff like that. But one of them that that hit me, just talking to you, was uh, um, it goes into the dream paranormal dream world. Fuck, dude, I just did one with hair uh, with Honeycut, and that's where this went. This is so weird because I've got one too. It's just really, like, yeah, just go for it. Should I not do that one? Or no, maybe we could No, we could do this one. This is the one you wanted to do. Let's do it. Are you sure? Because it's weird, man. That's right, oh. man. It's it's this is cool, but it's a trip that this is where this this road is taking us in the, the Yeah, maybe it's a sign, dude. Maybe. Yeah. So um we're staying at someone's house. You know, we're on tour. The band's on tour. It was me, Dan. I think it was Marky, actually. It wasn't Billy. It was Marky from, from Zeke. And uh, and we were, uh, yeah, it was. It was us three. And I had Mackenzie. <coughs> oh, she was before me. Yeah, Mackenzie was doing merch. We're staying at some buddy's house i can't remember where in like <laughs> i want to say new mexico or something but uh you know how it is you sleep on people's floors sometimes and we had there was a couple couches and dan was on a couch and uh marky was on a couch uncle buck was there too i think i want to say but uh mckenzie was there and uh we were uh Everyone was asleep, and, and when, when I was younger, this, this shit used to happen to me where I would, I would get sleep paralysis. I don't know if you've ever had sleep paralysis where you... I didn't get, get it until, until I was like 27, 28, but it's scary. I had it happen at a house. I was pretty sure it's haunted, too. Yeah, so I, I, I had it, it started to happen to me when I was in my teen, teenage years, uh, and I would be dead sober, and I would, get, and I would be able to see, like, things around me and be almost like a DMT trip. I don't know if you ever did DMT, but it's kind of like that where you're like sinking down and you can see this like other realm. But uh, anyways, it was, uh, I thought I was going into sleep paralysis is what was happening, right? And I thought, oh, wow, I haven't felt this in like 10 years. And I was like sinking and like, you know, I had the total sleep paralysis thing happening. But this time something weird happened where I heard a voice in my ear. And it said, it was like, it, all it was saying was, can you hear me? Can you hear me? While I'm doing the sleep paralysis thing. So I'm thinking like, oh, shit. Like, like okay, I'm in a really crazy, bad, sleep, par- paralyzed dream. Well, the voice seemed really real. It was like voices, you know, you hear people talk about voices in their head going crazy. Well, yeah. 
this was like that. And I thought, oh my God, I'm having this crazy dream. What, you know, and if you've ever had sleep paralysis, you know, it's horrible. You think you're going to die. And uh, the voices kept, kept saying, can you hear me? And it was like whispering right in my ear. And I finally, I was just like, yeah, you can't really talk. But I was like, you know, like, yeah, like, yes. I acknowledge, you know, I hear you. And right when I said yes, the voice just goes, listen, like that. And right when it said, listen, boom, I could hear everyone in the room's dreams, whatever there was going on in their dreams. And, and I could like, look, my eyes could look around. It was just like, like, I hear Dan, like, blah, 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 blah. The, Mackenzie was next to me. I remember her dream. She was like weeping, like crying, but I could see him sleeping, but I could hear what was ever going on in their dream world at the same time. So it was like all this chatter from like five people, five people's brain chatter. I was able to like hear it at once. And, uh, and I was like sitting there and it was like, the voice is like, can you hear it? Can you hear it? And I was like, yes, I hear it. And it was like, listen. And so then I was like trying to listen and make out like Dan's dream and like <laughs> trying to like make out like, but it was hard with all the chatter going on. And uh, the one thing that I could, could make out because it was so panicked feeling was Mackenzie's, her dream was she was weeping. It was like crying. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, it just, like, stopped. And I'm laying there. Everyone's still asleep. And I'm just laying there going, okay. That was a really weird dream, sleep paralysis dream thing. Weird. You know what I mean? It was yeah. kind of trippy. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, that's just, a, but I'm a, you know, my mind's crazy and shit. I did a lot of acid back in the day. So back in the 1900s. So I used <laughs> to, uh, so I thought, you know, just chalked it up as like a, you know, really crazy, weird dream. But I couldn't really go back to sleep. It was really like with me. Yeah. Well, the next, that morning when Mackenzie woke up, since hers was the only one I remembered, she was sleeping next to me, and I said, hey, hey, she woke up, I, and I'm like, do you remember your dream last night? And she's like, it's funny. She said, yeah, I do. She's like, I was, I was like in some rap video with some rappers, and then immediately I'm relieved, like, oh, thank God. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I was like worried about her, like the cry thing, and you know what I mean? She was weeping, and I cared about her at that time. I thought, okay, yeah, okay, weird. But then she's like, the weird part about the rap video, though, the director was so mad at me because I had to do this, like, cry scene. And they had me doing it over and over, and I couldn't get it right. And at that point, I was like, oh, what do you mean cry scene? She's like, yeah, he wanted me to, like, cry, and I couldn't do it. So they had me do it over and over again. Weird. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> is that uh, is that is that weird? Yeah, that one's true. Did I was I really able to like tap into their dream? Was I did, was that real? Yeah. Or or was it just a weird coincidence? I don't know. Or, or is there thing. chatter going on in all of our brains? And for some reason, when I was in that sleep paralysis state, whatever it was. I was able to like tap into that because uh, we know there's chatter going on right now in, in your brain. You're going, Oh God, this guy's a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, and yeah, then, no, and no, whatever, everyone's thinking, but there's chatter going on. Yeah. And as I'm talking to you, I'm thinking, Oh my God, what are you doing, Bob? Dog bite doesn't believe a word you're saying right now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we're all, but we all have this happen. brain chatter. <laughs> which means that it is existing and it's happening somewhere. So is there another uh, dimension. dimension that this is going on that maybe we can tap into? Yeah. I don't know. That's they my can... weird story, though, that, that, that was kind of like reality meets dream world. 
yeah i've had i've had similar stuff happen we had a place when me and my wife first moved in together my daughter came out of her bedroom well okay so first off let's rewind it so i checked on her because she was sleeping right and we've been having issues like you could hear doors open and shut while we were in bed and shit like that <laughs> and um so i went to check on my daughter and she was sleeping in her bed and then i went and took a piss and i was heading to bed myself and in between the time it took me to go to piss and to get back to my bedroom my daughter who was like three at the time was standing in the middle of our bedroom stark ass naked with scratches all over her body what when i went fuck? when i went and checked on her she had full-blown footy pajamas on so this is so keep in mind this probably took two three minutes top my three-year-old stripped down naked with scratches all over her body in the middle of my bedroom and she's babbling some kind of weird fucking tongue the next day she didn't remember any of it and the scratches had vanished and we're talking these like scratches that almost like broke the skin they weren't like completely broken and they're on places on her body that she couldn't reach so that's weird dude yeah dude i mean who knows maybe she was having some weird dream and she like i didn't see what happened maybe she fell and it was you know or hit her back on the wall because we had that rough wall but but weather man, balloons it could have sure. been weather weather balloons <laughs> yeah it sure healed fast but we were having all kinds of problems in the same apartment not long after that you know and then wow. we'd see little shadows and stuff and not long after that is when i had my first sleep paralysis too um this scared the shit out of me mine wasn't quite wow. as intense as yours but i woke up thinking there was somebody in my room and i couldn't move and i couldn't talk and i remember just trying with all my might to get up and to, to try to say something i thought i was fucking oh, it's, dying it's the worst i'm afraid to like talk about it because whenever i talk about it it happens something happens yeah yeah it happened like two or three times in that place again and then once in another place i lived at not long after i moved out but it's never happened to me again but yeah it's i the second time it wasn't as scary because i understood what was happening and the second i relaxed and was like fuck you i'm gonna come out of this it was fine I was like, I've been here, but the first time it seemed like it took forever. I I thought it was, like, it was like something was trying to drag me into, to fucking wherever the fuck it was at, and it wasn't gonna be pretty when I got there, kind of, you know. No, that's what I felt like too. I felt like it, it, it always feels like death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I always am like, wow, this is like what it feel, what it is to die. Yeah, that's that's yeah, kind of that, that was kind of the feeling I had too. That one, yeah, that one is kind of hard for me to talk about because that exact feeling, like that's I, I kind of imagine that's like the, what the last few minutes of your life feels like, mm -hmm. Pop, popping in and out, trying to fucking come back, you know. But I hope it's more peaceful than that. Fuck, you know. But who knows? Yeah, it's weird to think, you know. One hundred years from right now, everyone on this, mo almost everyone on this planet will be dead. And mm -hmm. there'll be a whole new batch of humans here. Yeah, if something doesn't wipe the whole earth out before then, you know. Right, right. But if, I mean, if, if you know, if if the earth is still here, there'll be another batch of humans. Uh, you yeah. know, we'll all be dead. Yeah, who knows if there's going to be different breeds of humans, you know, or species, <laughs> you know. The whole new alien fucking side of shit too, you know. You know who you need to, you know who you need to talk to about all this stuff is Dan. Yeah, I I was thinking about that. He's you need to get Dan on a whole episode about the AI and all that shit. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I was dude. I watched that episode of Rogan with uh, Elon Musk, and he was talking about AI and how he thinks that it's possible that it's gaining its own perspective and its own power, you know, and, uh, or like that we could, we already are in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. So he thinks we're already in it. And it's kind of funny because it's like, we're not even a thought to it though. Like it just, you know, lives its life. We're just like a toy for it, you know, or just something that exists like a fly, you know? Wow. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. 
there's a lot of trippy the the more technology gets crazy the the and the more we start learning things you realize how fucking small we are you know if humans have been brought up to think we're like second in command next to god for forever and now that we're cracking shit open day to day it's like we're realizing how fucking small we are you know it's funny about the time we start to get shit figured out this earth will burp and we'll fucking die or the sun will burn out or something probably you know but personally and i'm a strong believer that energy is what lives you know like it's a proven thing that every body has the energy that surrounds it and when somebody dies that body dies but the energy goes someplace so I think that's I why I so. feel like I have connections to things or like I feel things at certain times that are unexplainable, you know, but I think that's how the afterlife is. That's my own personal belief on it, you know, it's like it's kind of just way bigger picture than what we're, we're seeing here, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the thing is, is that none of it, like, we're, as you're alive, there's no way to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my my thing. You'll find our, out. There's our, our only brain, one way to find brains, out. Our brains, either that or our brains are being. You know, I feel like sometimes through like like drugs or something, you 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 get like a a peek into some other. You it's know, funny. it's funny you're just talking about DMT because you know I've known multiple people that have done it, and I've known multiple people that have do art after they do it and all their art looks the same and none of them have met each other or seen each other's shit on the internet it's, it's very similar art and it's it, a lot of them feel like they get close to the afterlife and that and it's kind of weird a lot of and everybody kind of describes it as the same thing like it kind of kills your ego and gives you a sense of enlightenment and peace and um, kind of kills a lot of anxiety and worry because you're set at ease a little bit, you know. I guess if you know that there's that, or there's you know, then you're you can live a little. You can rest easy or something, knowing that there's like light no. beings on the. <laughs> yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that's the case. You know, I just think it's a realize that there's Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan talks a lot about that. Yeah, Joe Rogan, he's pretty good. I haven't really liked him since he moved to Spotify, but he's had some really good episodes about DMT. Like, I kind of want to do it, really. Um, when we were at Maynard's house, they wanted me to do that toad. That's really similar. It's like a real natural version <laughs> of DMT. You guys all were – do you remember that? Dan still tells that story. You guys all wanted me to do it because all you motherfuckers were sober. I was the only one in the band that wasn't sober. And you guys were like, smoke the toad. And I was like, there's no fucking way I'm going to smoke toad around all you fucking guys. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to get Dan to do it. I was like, I'll do it if Dan does it. But then everybody, Pat Brown got all down on Dan. Like, he's like, you're sober, man. Don't do Dude, it. I'm telling you, you need Dan and Fecto an episode. That should be your next episode. I should do DMT with Dan and record that. <laughs> right. He said he has some last time I talked to him because I was picking his brain about it, actually, because I knew Dan had to do DMT. So I was, like, telling him, like, dude, uh, tell me about it. And he told me a bit about it. And then he told me, he's like, I got some, but I don't know if I want to give it to you. Well, like, I don't have, know you if done, have you ever done salvia? No, I've heard stories about it, but I, salvia sounds dirtier than DMT. There's like it sounds like DMT without the enlightenment a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, it's like you it's know? like meth. To, it's like it's like meth to cocaine or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably. It's like the cheap man's. It's like the cheap man. It's like the poor man's DMT. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like huffing air freshener compared to taking mushrooms. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but man. Have you done DMT? Well, I did this. I I think it was. P, I I don't know to this day if it was PCP or DMT. It was at a rainbow gathering, and uh, the guy it was laced with something. When I hit oh. it, though, everything changed instantly, and and. Uh, I went on this like three minute long crazy high 
And, uh, and you know me back, or you don't know me as sober, but back then I know what it's like to get high. I know yeah. it's like to smoke weed. I know it's like to take acid. This was not that. Well, if it was three my, minutes long, my, it's probably DMT. But my friend said he thinks it was PCP. Huh. But the other guy said it was DMT. But mm. I don't know. Because it was just a, it was at a rainbow gathering, Grateful Dead like thing. And I was already out of my mind. And all I know is, is the world stopped. The world stopped. And I was like looking around like in a picture almost mm -hmm. like a, like a picture frame. And it was like, I was able to like, <laughs> like move through it. And I thought, Oh my God, my brain broke. Huh? I thought my brain was like broken and I was never, I was like that guy who was never going to come back. Yeah. You know? Um, so I, I don't know. I, it might've, it, I've, you know, my cousin says it was PCP. But I remember that guy saying it was DMT. Well, the big so. there's a huge difference in that. PCP lasts a fucking long time, from what I understand. Yeah, this was quick. That's what this everybody like said. A DMT's like, like but my world, this my world stopped. Whatever it was, was I was. No, I've never been that fucked up. Like intense. World stops yeah around you and you're like whoa you know yeah they say that it feels like forever with dmt but it's only like three minutes about is what they say so yeah um yeah that's that's what they say but uh they say pcp takes a while i watched uh that well steve-o did pcp and then taped himself for like three fucking days tripping out what about um ayahuasca have you heard about this i've heard about it but i don't know anything about it at all really me neither there's a lot of these new natural drugs that's supposed to send you in the spirit world that are, that are going around <clears throat> but it's weird being sober for so long after doing so many drugs <laughs> as a as a kid and like thinking about like um how many hallucinogens i did in the 1900s like mushrooms and lsd hundreds of hits yeah. if not i mean if not more uh i'm definitely in the hundreds and hundreds of hits of lsd and uh it's weird to like now be sober for like almost 20 years 18 years now a good chunk of your life and to be like it was so funny me and sean you know sean 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 woodbridge mm, that name sounds familiar okay he's a good friend of mine where's he, he from good he was abused doing merch for me for a while from seattle um we were taught we were talking about all the all the lsd in the 1900s you know like we we're like dude we did hundreds of hits of acid and he had, you know, I bought a school bus. I have a school bus. And he drove down here and he bought a school bus. And we both had our school buses parked at Walmart. This was last summer. We're both at our school buses parked at Walmart. We're barbecuing hot dogs at the Walmart parking lot. And we were talking about the 90s and like, man, all those drugs. And we had a couple buddies that never made it out. You know, yeah. they, their, their brains broke. And we were both sitting there like, God, thank God we made it out. And then like, I looked at him and he's sitting next to his school bus and I'm sitting next to my school bus and we're barbecuing hot dogs at Walmart and all these normal people are walking by. And I looked at him <laughs> and I said, I said, I said, dude, <laughs> did we make it out? <laughs> what if uh, we think we made it out? And those people are looking at us going, I look at those poor guys never made it out of the nineties. Oh, you know, fuck it. You know well, you're, not I mean? a, you're not at home. You're taking care of yourself. I I got like a, I always have like a level of respect for that aspect of like the ultimate freedom for you. You know, like uh, that kind of life isn't for everybody, but I get why you like it. You know, well, you just kind of had to like, honestly, like camper living for me over the years, it's just conducive for music. Mm -hmm. 
and I've told people that, like the what you know, because you know, when you're when you're there's hardly any, it's hard to make money, you know. Yeah. So and and if you have a big rent and a car payment and a house uh-huh. payment. Okay. And a child support payment, and a this payment, and a that payment. Payments don't work for this kind of life. So it's better. That's why I don't have any payments. I never had a kid. I never had a house payment. I, you know, I bought this condemned place for twelve thousand dollars in the middle of the woods of Nowhereville, and it took me ten years to save up that much. You know, so, and I got a school bus, and I got the John Deere motorhome. The cool thing about buses and stuff like that is you just need a buddy. Mm -hmm. You just need someone that's like, hey, can I park my my camper on the side of your house? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a small price to pay for freedom. That and, uh, you know, I think that there's a lot to be said about there's a reason that you can write so many songs too, I think, you know, and I think it's because you, you have that ability to be around people, but you have the gift of being alone whenever you feel like you need to step away from that. And then because it's real hard now that I'm a family man and I'm a working guy, dude, I've got all this stuff inside me that I want to put down on paper and in songs, but I just like don't have the time or the the time to put myself in the mindset to get it out, you know. And, yeah. And I think that's 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 why you can constantly write shit, you know. Yeah, I just finished my second script, dude. I've been writing screenplays during this COVID shit, um, and I wrote ton. You know, I just released that song with Shooter Jennings, uh, mm-hmm. headed to the country. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it, man. I didn't even know you're doing it, and I saw your merch. People yeah, are hitting up, I, we, people are hitting we, up the email. When can we get that album? I'm like, I don't fucking know, but I, I'm gonna assume you we, can probably we, get it on we, Shooter's website. We, we we did that pretty quick. As you can see, my black eyes still, you know, it, it wasn't like I did it a long time ago. It's we did that within the last couple weeks. Wow. So yeah, we just banged that out fast. But uh, I'm writing like screenplays and. Yeah, man, I can't imagine. <laughs> I yeah, when you're just alone, I guess you know. There's, I think there's probably bonuses to having family and stuff. I just single out here in the woods, man. There's no excuses. Yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing to do but write. How so weird is music. it? How weird is it to think that that you just went into the studio with the guy that just did like a huge interview because he's hot off the tails of like recording Marilyn Manson's album. That's like on the billboard charts right now. Like, Oh, who shooter? Yeah. Shooter yeah. just recorded Manson's album. It's like, a, it's like a hot Not on the billboard that, charts. Dude, he's, he's doing like Brandy Carlisle and like Tanya Tucker. Like they're the biggest. Duff like McKagan all, too from Guns N' Duff, Roses. Duff McKay, yeah. G- Duff. So he's got uh, a lot no, of good, and he, and not only that, he he brought Tanya Tucker kind of out of out of hiding and shit, and he got that album. Direct, I got to direct Tanya Tucker in a video. Oh really? Yeah, with the uh, Hellbound Glory, it was sick, dude. Oh, you did that. Uh, you did that. Fucking better hope you die young. Yeah. What a good, I didn't know you did that video. Song. But sh- dude, Shooter, he's just a natural at producing. Yeah, it was great. It was cool to work with him because he's, it's just natural for him. So it's really quick. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Some people are just, he's just, he knows shit that I was like, I, he's like, dude, the drum needs to blah, blah. I don't know what he's, he's just natural at it. Yeah. You know, so, so we did that whole song in one day. Okay. one, One day it was done, done, track, mixed. That was it. So you guys just did one one song? One song. One day. We all hooked up, you know, around noon. And by like six, seven, eight, was wrapping it up. And the whole thing was tracked and mixed. Pretty much mixed. Yeah. He's got got like a well, it's like a machine, you know? Like when your band's on tour for years, you have that machine. He's got that with the 
producer thing going on. So that was rad, dude. Plus, I've been friends with him for years, and to, to be able to, like, get in the studio and do something with him, it was fun. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I've always liked his shit, man, and always admired him in that aspect. Uh, seems like a cool cool dude. I was, I was pretty it's stoked to see that cool, song man. about <clears throat> well, Super cool. He's our generation, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, it's. I think, you know, there's a lot of popular shit that's, like, out right now. But I think, you know, you look back and you look at, like, what is known to, like, our generation as, like, good in the 70s and stuff like that. Or, like, the 50s, even, you know, and... Like, Hank Williams wasn't playing to huge arenas, and he was playing a lot of venues like you were in his height, you know? Like, he was playing to probably 5,000 people a night, you know? I mean, which is it's more I'm than... I'm playing to, like, 50, dude. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but, like, but, I mean, like, but it's, it's yeah. not... But, I mean, El Corazon, but, like, venues like El Corazon may be a little bigger, you know? Yeah, okay, so my big nights on my own are, like, 150, 200. Yeah, yeah. You know, but. Which we don't know. Maybe that's, you know, I could see a little hockey talks being filled with 100 and 150 people being a lot. Yeah, and then. Uh, for I mean, me, for, to be honest, dude, for me, and I've played arenas opening up they weren't there for me i was i did a whole arena tour in europe opening up for this this huge band uh called boss haas and dude the it was like 15 16 000 people every night and uh my mother was in here Uh-oh. 